Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching and it's part three of my How to Paint Hero Quest series and in this video I'm going to work on the tables, kind of bookshelves and the chests you see here, primarily sort of wooden based terrain. Now I'm not going to talk about the undercoat and what I've done to prepare the models because there's a whole separate video for that so watch that and check that one out but we're going straight in with the metallic colours. Now when you're working with metallics especially on a pale base coat like we've done here you gotta be really careful to get a really good coverage because what you don't want is any of that kind of white showing through because it really ruins metallic effect. So thin coats, spread them on and just make sure that you are covering all the kind of white areas before we move on. Now as you go through the models working in a batch like we're working now just speeds the whole process up and go through and it's your choice really as to what you put the metallics on. Obviously you can see what I'm doing on the video here I'm picking out you know the hinges on this particular cabinet but not doing the door knockers and picking out like a tankard that's on the, the uh, bookshelf here and some coins that are stacked there but really you can pick the different colors kind of uh, as you want now what i am doing though if you've watched the video on how i painted the doors for hero quest is i'm making sure i'm doing the hinges and the door knockers in the same color that i did on the doors because then it'll tie the scenery together when we finally get it on the table in one go the same thing we're working this apothecary carry table here I think it's called um, you've got the scales and just picking some of it but not all into the silver because then we're going to move on and work on the brass like we're seeing here so the interesting kind of gargoyle face detail on the chest we're picking out in brass gives some visual interest on there so moving on to the table just putting some bolts and things in a brass color you don't have to do that you could have equally painted those bolts in that kind of silver color but it just means you get a little bit more detail uh, and it doesn't take really much more time Talking about the batch and why I've broken these models down into these little batches, it gives you enough models that the paint will dry in between each model so that when you're handling these as you're moving them around later on, the paint should have primarily dried. Still be careful because it can still rub off, you know, even if it's not uh, fully sort of cured within that kind of 20 minutes or whatever. But it's enough that you don't have to keep pausing the paint job to wait for it to dry and you can work through the batch quite comfortably quickly. Also, pulling together the models that all have similar colors on again to speed that process up so working on our table here and this is the piece with a bit more detail than the others so i spend a little bit more time on this table when you're working on it uh, notice things like the locket that's on this table here has got a gem in the middle so i'm just leaving that clear so we can put some color on later for there again always thinking about that consistency of covering all the white and just making sure now we're moving on to the contrast paint section now this is why these models are undercoated in this pale color again i won't labor that point but that's on a, how i prepare the model for painting video when you are using contrast paint same thing applies you want to be careful you get into all the gaps and cracks because you don't want any of that white showing through so get the brush right up to the sections you've already painted in the metallics thing to bear in mind with the color using here which is a, a wildwood the thicker you put this on, the darker the wood's going to become. So you've got to be quite careful not to let it pool up in any place because if you've got a thick layer, as you can see here in one place, and a thin layer in another, you will end up with dramatically different colours uh, on the wood there. Now a little bit of that isn't too bad. So a little bit of pooling, don't worry about, but what you don't want is one part of the same plank of wood in really, really dark colour, one part pale. Things to consider because this is quite a dark scheme, the, the kind of... Uh, detail into the wood there on the bookshelf you were seeing uh, that kind of filigree try not to get any of it on there because that will affect the next color we're going to use if there's any transferring across now if you do get it in the wrong place all you need to do is just clean the contrast paint off your brush just have the brush a bit wet and take the contrast paint off where you've made a mistake now we see here onto this filigree piece with this yellow color now this is to represent more of a pale wood that you do see on these cabinets you could have done the whole thing in one brown but i think it would have been too much um, of a dark brown color so breaking it up with this kind of yellowy wood color is quite a nice way of doing it and now what i'm doing for these next stages with the bookshelf you've got lots of books on there i wanted to make it slightly visually different so whatever color i'm now using from going forward i'm then painting a few of the book spines on there and different books on uh, the two different bookshelves because you get two of the same shelf you don't want the same books painted the same color and then moving on again and dropping some of that color onto one of the bottles on the kind of apothecary table Moving on here to quite a vibrant colour. Now I've picked this kind of very bright purple colour because I figured it's kind of an apothecary table, kind of a wizard, so it's kind of a very wizardly colour, that kind of bright purple. And see here moving on to some of the other books. Again, just picking out the spines that I think seem relevant. You can see where I've used that Majos purple on a couple of the spines um, and just really trying to uh, work on the bookshelf in and amongst doing these other pieces of scenery. Now we've moved on to a snake bite leather colour uh, for the paper and parchment that's on the table. So why have I chosen that colour? Because we could have left it white. White is very hard to make look good on a model 
and it's kind of a medieval sorcery type thing so kind of leathery parchment stuff i think works quite well um, for doing this paper so yeah i mean you could just leave it plain white but i thought it was quite interesting bringing in those kind of darker tones now working again on red and then moving on to the green and again getting it onto the books you can see the bookshelf coming together now now some of these books look quite vibrant and probably too bright for what they should look like but we're going to work on that in a second once we've worked through uh, the rest of these models and the bottles in this table some of these vibrant colors are actually really quite interesting on there it makes it look like kind of poison bottles or whatever it is here now working on the, the black I started off on a book rather than starting off somewhere else. I wanted to pull the black in purely for this one part on this kind of pocket table because you can see he's writing a letter. So making that pot look like an ink pot with some of that solid black in there. It's just a different way of, of using, you know, those colours. Then we are effectively in here working on these very small details. And this set actually, even though it's a fairly simple scenery set, there's lots of little nice details in there that you can pick out. Like we're using the... the the bone on the skull there and then moving on with that to the, the small feather so when you're doing the earlier stages just make sure you're not catching kind of the feather or the details there you could absolutely do that top of that feather in red or the blue or whatever kind of color you wanted now here's an interesting color the gore grunt of fur this is obviously meant for doing furs on robes and things but it's an ideal alternate color uh, to make a secondary wood color on this table you could absolutely have used the same wood color on the base of the kind of scales but i wanted just to make a little bit of visual difference because otherwise it would have just been one mass of color now it's something you absolutely don't have to do but i just thought it'd be interesting taking some of that black that we've already used for the inkwell and things and just taking some very thin lines with a very thin brush and just really scribbling onto where that paper is to make it look like it's a half written parchment it doesn't take any much effort i'm not actually writing anything i'm just literally blobbing it on and sort of making um, messy writing really and then that is effectively it we're now on to the wash date so all the models now are going to get a really good coverage of seraphim sepia so i said before about how difficult it is holding models sometimes to do this kind of stage all i've done here is taken a bit of blue tack put it at the bottom of the model and stuck it onto a paint pot that i wasn't currently using and then putting a reasonably generous layer of seraphim sepia across the top but if there are any sections where it starts pooling again too thick like you can see under the handle there just making sure we move that away either with a totally separate brush or just once you've got most of your wash off the brush just like so there run it along the lines and you can then rub it back off into the pot because you don't want massive pools of this this wash there because it will go a bit too thick across all the models you want to do this kind of sepia wash now now this is a seraphim sepia plenty of game washes you could use i find this is, is a nice interesting tone because it Kind of well in its name it's a sepia and it makes it look a bit oldie worldy makes it look slightly dirty without going too far because we don't want the scenery too dirty uh, and just yeah get that on all the models and it dries quite nicely so here's the models dried this is after i've given it a coat of matte varnish as well the light's quite harsh it's getting quite reflecty but it's given a nice simple effect you know the, the metal looks rusty and aged the wood has two or three tones in it now with that contrast paint and then that sepia toned wash over the top of it and I think it's nicely toned down, you know, the bookshelves and the skulls and things. You can see there how I've painted the books slightly differently, different colours in different areas. So they do look like two totally separate pieces. I'm really happy with how the wood has turned out on these models for such a quick, simple painting technique. Um, I think, yeah, you could spend an awful lot more time on these models. You could do some extra highlights and stages now. But I'm leaving it as it is because for me, this is just about getting the set done nice and quick to get it ready for gaming. So hope you enjoyed kind of how I've taken you through that painting scheme. Uh, if you have, like, comment, subscribe, all that other YouTube jazz, and hopefully I will see you on another video.